So immediately, if you're like me and you're one of those people that whenever you read the word exorcism, you see nun, devil, you just kind of feel burnt out. You feel like you've seen the movie 15 times in a row. Let me warn you, this movie is not like that. And if you can't tell, obviously to me, that's a good thing. And going into this movie, I knew literally nothing about it. I'd never seen a trailer. I'd never heard anything about it. I just saw the premise of it, figured I'd check it out. And I'm kind of lucky I did because this feels like it's one of those movies that for sure would have been mismarketed and people would have the wrong impression when they enter it. Because I don't even think this movie is really a horror movie in a traditional sense. There's obviously scary things that are going to happen in it, but the vast majority of the movie is not scary. It's not supposed to be scary. It's kind of just a thriller. It's tense. Because the way they choose to go about making the movies, you don't really watch a movie so much as you watch what feels like an episode of a TV show. And the way the movie chooses to go about this is it gives you a little bit of a backstory about this TV host we're going to get to know named Jack Delroy. He kind of hosts the Night Owl version of a late night TV show in the 70s. And in the story they're trying to build, he's obviously competing with Johnny Carson. This is like the number two show or something in the 70s. He's trying to get his ratings up and he's trying to get more viewers to watch his midnight show. And the entire way the movie's filmed, as I said, is a mockumentary. So what it's kind of doing, it's giving you a backstory of the TV host, his life before he became a host, his up and coming, before they inevitably get into the fact that obviously the footage you're going to be watched, as you've seen in other movies before, is like the forgotten footage, the unaired episode. So you're going to be seeing scenes that nobody's seen before, and it's kind of like this scary ordeal that happened on set. And if I had to do a positive to this movie immediately, I think the strongest element of this movie is how immersive it is when it comes to feeling like you're actually watching an episode of 70s late night TV. I would kind of describe this whole movie as like this weird fever dream where like there was a point in time in this movie about an hour into it. I actually forgot I was watching a movie and the reality kind of hit me and I was like, wait, am I, am I in a movie theater? Am I watching a movie? Because I was so immersed in the way they kind of edited and compiled the movie. I actually thought I was like sitting in my living room watching late night TV or streaming some documentary or late night episode on Hulu or something. And the way they choose to go about this is actually really smart. In my opinion, you're actually watching a live rendition of his episode and it's all in color. But it's only when they go to commercials and they say, let's throw it to an ad or a sponsor or something. The movie then switches over to being in gray and you kind of see the actors not acting for the talk show. So you kind of have the entire movie that's set between black and white and color based on whether or not the show's live or it's off the air. And immediately when I think to talk about the plot of this movie, it's actually really tricky because it's a movie I'm immediately going to say is best experience if you don't know too much about it. And for that, I'm not going to get into a ton of details about the story, just a little bit of the background, obviously, of how they progress the story of the talk show. You have this guy, Jack Delroy. He's the host of the show. Obviously, you're going to follow him on his journey. And he's kind of trying to establish that he's actually a talk show host. He's as good as Johnny Carson, but the show is failing and he needs ways to keep it alive. And the footage you end up watching is his unaired episode of a Halloween special, which is kind of where he's just like, you know, laying all of his chips on the table. He's got nothing left. This is his last hurrah to keep the show on. So on the episode, you get to see a lot of like weird kooky things. You get to, you know, experience a psychic on a live TV show, a skeptic of the psychic. So they play off of each other really well. And for his final part of the act, it's going to be like the big encore that shocks audiences around the country. He's going to have this girl who's supposed to be possessed by a demon a girl who wrote a best-selling book about it on the show with him is going to interview her and he's going to see if she actually is possessed or if it's kind of a scam. And obviously without getting into too many details, as I said, I kind of want you to experience this blind if you see it because I think it's the best experience that way. By far the best thing this movie does is it really leans into the fact that it makes you feel like it's a 70s TV show. Because you have all these characters that really play off of each other, you know, the psychic, the skeptic, and they really make you feel like you're on the talk show by having them interact naturally to the point where they progress the plot by actual dialogue and authenticity. You have these like really smart conversations about what it means to be a skeptic, you know, how to debunk frauds, you know, stuff you even see as the viewer where you're thinking like, okay, that could 100% be cheesed or is it real? Like, what are they doing in this movie? And I also really like that a big part of this movie is acting like you are the audience. You know, they always say that we're going to go to a commercial break. You get like the screen filter that comes across going to commercial. They do some experiments like hypnosis in which they say audience follow along and like it's in front of you as well. There's just like a lot of stuff that I thought was like really smart and like the devil's in the details, no pun intended, to which they make you feel like you're actually in the studio audience when they film this. And if it wasn't for that immersion, I don't really think it's that groundbreaking, but the fact that it feels so connected to you, I think makes the movie really, really work. As the plot's progressing, obviously, you kind of keep going into the third act until everything kind of boils over, like the majority of horror movies. And when shit starts to finally hit the fan in this movie, it goes zero to 100 really quick. It goes from like kind of like a mundane talk show vibe to over the top, extreme horror. And I was a big fan of how it never felt like I was really waiting for the horror to come. It just kind of came naturally and it didn't really take away from anything before that. I thought the acting was great, especially the main guy, and I thought they really do a convincing job of making you feel like you're in the 70s. 
I thought the cinematography was great. I think you really feel like you're in the 70s the way it looks visually. The color schemes they use, the shadows, the graininess really immerses you. When you do get to the end, I'm not going to spoil it or anything. I think it's really creative the way they mesh some of the story arcs from the beginning of the movie to the end. to The point where it was getting to a point where I was kind of like, I really hope they don't do what they're going to do. And they do choose to do what I hope they wouldn't do. But I didn't mind it because the way it actually ends up concluding... I thought it wraps up really nice and it was something I didn't see coming, thought it was really creative. And the more I thought about it as an alternative to what I didn't want, I couldn't actually think of a better way to end it. So I was actually completely satisfied with the way they wrapped it all up at the end. Overall, keeping this one brief, because I obviously think this is a movie you should experience blind. You should see how unique it is. I would rate this movie as one of the most unique horror movies I've ever seen, maybe. Especially in recent memory, it's been a long time since I saw a movie that was this immersive, this unique of a take. I don't think I've ever seen a movie that did what this movie did. It's definitely one of the most creative movies I've seen this year. Maybe one of the most creative movies I've seen in a long time. Honestly, it might be my favorite movie of the year so far. So if you're a fan of mockumentaries or like general thrillers, horror movies, I would definitely recommend this movie to you. If you do choose to see it, it's only about 90 minutes long. It's like a really brief visit into the 70s talk show host world. And I definitely can't say enough that I think it's very unique and I think you'll enjoy it if you go into it with an open mind and you're kind of looking for something that's going to keep you on your toes a little bit. So have you seen this movie? Comment down below, let me know. I'm really curious what people are going to think of this movie because as I said, it didn't get a lot of marketing and publicity around me, but I definitely think it should have. I really hope this movie gets supported and that we get more unique movies like this. If you haven't seen this movie or don't plan on it, what's your favorite like possession devil type movie? Because I don't know, they're also played out at this point. I'm kind of looking for ones that are interesting. And if you're still here and you haven't already subscribed, I mean, what else are you doing? But yeah, go see this movie supported. It's a good movie. Other than that, as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.